this is very close to my heart, and I think it's very close to many of our hearts. Um, so the two strands that we're leading on in our palliative and end-of-life work stream are outcomes and routine data. And I think we see the, the outcomes strand will start small and build up throughout. And we hope that they will connect in a very useful way when we're sort of into the latter stages of the five years. But that's a slightly long-term uh, vision. What I'd like to just go through with you uh, in a sort of more concrete way is the short, medium and longer term objectives for outcomes. And just to remind you, by outcomes we mean the individual level changes for patients and families. So we want to develop an inclusive palliative and end of life care collaborative across South London and beyond. Um, and it's inclusive. So the people who you notice are not here, then please tell them about the clerk when you go back. And we will welcome them to contact us and to the next meeting. What we want to develop at first is a common set of measures to capture patient needs and outcomes. And I think we really want to go to measures that will work hard for us. So what I mean by that is that we are busy people and we have all the financial and other constraints on us and our time. So we need to be very clever about introducing things that we can capture at patient level, which tell us about the effects the work that we're trying to do to deliver best care is having. Um, and for a long time, we all know in palliative care, we've relied on the thank you letters and we've relied on the stories from the people that we serve, and that's how palliative care has grown. But the time has come to step up to the plate and start to deliver some objective data that shows us the outcomes, the difference we're really making. And we all know we do make a huge difference. And I think we really must step up to this challenge and start to measure at patient level uh, the difference we're making. So what I mean when I say the measures must work hard for us is that we want them to deliver on describing the needs of the people we're seeing, the complexity of those needs, and then at the same time, delivering on outcomes. And I think we can also make them work even harder and deliver us quality indicators or quality standards as well. I'll talk about that in a minute. We also want to be intelligent about this and align it with other initiatives because there's lots going on nationally and we're very linked into that. So the funding pilots, which some of us are taking part in, the national MDS uh, minimum data set development, which I think Heather's already referred to. There is work going on to take uh, outcomes forward at a national level, both through Help the Hospices, but through other partners. I know through Katie Lindsay and so forth. Uh, there are the nice quality standards around end of life care, which we are trying to deliver to but many of us don't know whether we're achieving that, and the ELQA um, initiative. So I think we can make some of this work at different levels for us. Uh, and most importantly, I think if we move towards robust outcome measurement, it will support research in a way that the field desperately needs. Uh, we haven't had enough robust uh, evidence to inform our practice. It's beginning to come through and we need to develop more of it rapidly. In the medium term, I think we want to implement a common set of measures. And I think we want to work towards linked and pooled outcome data for the reasons we've just been talking about, to better understand the population needs and outcomes rather than thinking only in our service uh, <coughs> silos, to support the evaluations of interventions which we so desperately need for palliative care, so the robust research. And I think also quality improvement as well, showing what difference we make and improving the difference that we make. And I think also there's something about taking us towards benchmarking. <coughs> and I think if, if you bear in mind that I think benchmarking is coming and we need to make it realistic and meaningful. And if we don't have the appropriate measures, we won't ever get to that point. In the longer term, I think we need to work towards regularly mapping case mix adjusted outcome, outcomes across South London for patients and families that we care for, and having the platforms to really evaluate 
the complex interventions which are the majority of what we do in palliative care. Um, and I think the principles throughout this uh, journey are about inclusivity, trying to include the partners that are here and beyond, uh, really having a patient and family centeredness to this and bridging the evidence practice gap, trying to ensure that we bridge it and we understand that we're doing it well as we do it. I make no excuse in going back to what an outcome measure is because so many of us forget. And I think the reason is that the lay use of the word outcome, kind of as a result of something, so often falls across our language. And actually, what I'm meaning here is a change in the patient's or the family's health over time in the broadest sense. Now, we know we can't stop the advancing serious illness of our patients, but we can improve their quality of life, and we can prevent their quality of life worsening more than it perhaps should. We can maintain their functional ability, etc. So it's about doing that in a realistic way and measuring it. And I think just to bear in mind, I said that I think this can work for us in terms of quality indicators as well, that actually... A quality indicator is a, a norm or a criteria or a standard to determine the quality of healthcare. And this comes to the question you had earlier. And I think it has to be measurable. It has to reflect some aspect of the structure, process or outcomes of care. And it has to have a numerator, a denominator and a norm. By which I mean that we need to know the people we're measuring it in, out of what population and some sort of standard. So I think we can take, this can work for us as a specialty in lots of ways and it can improve end-of-life care if we use it intelligently. Just to give you an example to make that clearer for those of you who perhaps uh, thought about this only in, uh, in the last few days, um, we might, for example, have a problem severity score of some kind which captures a person's pain or nausea or other symptom problems maybe some of their psychological uh, symptoms, anxiety or depressed mood, some of their information needs or their family issues, and so on. When it's measured at one point in time, we are capturing the main concerns or domains of, of those needs, where needs are the ability to benefit from their health care they're going to get. The complexity of their needs is about the number and severity of those different domains and the way they interact together. Bearing in mind, I mean, we've all seen people who are very sick who have total pain, as described by Cicely Saunders, where they have a physical pain, but because of the social implications and because of their anxieties and the psychological impact, it all just escalates. It's not additive, it's multiplicative, and it all takes off. And then the resources need to address that person's needs are quite high. Once we get to measurement at a second time point, we're then transforming that into an outcome measure. So we're measuring a change in health status. So their pain score might have improved, and we're seeing an outcome at a patient level. So that is what we really are interested in capturing and understanding. And there's um, different initiatives that we're taking this forward with, but I particularly want to talk to you about the Outcomes Assessment and Complexity Collaborative. So we've started this already in a small way with a, uh, just a, few, a small number of partners um, across the southeast sector where we're beginning to understand the research evidence that is already out there around implementing outcomes and we're taking forward the implementation of outcomes and studying it at the same time to really understand what works in implementing outcome measures and what doesn't work and why. And as we do that, we are very keen to expand the, the collaborative to include the South London and even the LCA uh, uh, sector that we're working with so that we can begin to build a platform where we are robustly capturing outcomes. They're implemented in different services, but in a way that works both for patients and families and for the professionals working in those services. We've also got an NIHR research programme, which you may be aware of, which is strongly related to the funding pilots, which is about developing a case mix classification for palliative care. 
so it's a research program and it's funded, uh, started actually late summer last year. Um, and it's looking at the best way to ensure that the resourcing at patient level, which we are moving towards rapidly as a specialty, actually will match uh, individual patient needs and have the appropriate outcomes. Um, so I've given you a little bit of information there about that project, but I don't want to dwell on it too much, just to say that there is a real resonance. And so I suppose in terms of the question that came earlier about getting involved and how can units get involved, we would welcome expressions of interest from specialist palliative care providers to work with us on the implementation of outcomes in their units. We are developing a core set of measures. Uh, we're very well on the way to that. We have been gathering the research evidence to understand the best ways to implement, the best ways to provide feedback from measures, and we will continue to undertake that research as we roll this out. And we will also build a platform for much more robust cross-sector uh, research as we go forward because it will help us with the evaluation of some of the interventions we put in place. So we probably will have different levels of engagement, but at the moment we are welcoming expressions of interest and we'd be very happy to dialogue with different organisations about how that can go forward. Thank you. Thank you.